Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.6.4.2, the control of blood glucose concentration from the AQA A level biology specification. As always, let's start with a look at our specification. First of all, we need to know the factors that influence blood glucose concentration. Then we need to know the role of the liver in glycogenesis, glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis and I'll cover what all of these terms mean. Then we need to know the action of insulin by attaching to receptors on the surfaces of target cells, as well as controlling the uptake of glucose by regulating the inclusion of channel proteins in the surface membranes of target cells, and also activating enzymes involved in the conversion of glucose to glycogen. We also need to know the action of glucagon by attaching to receptors on the surfaces of target cells and activating enzymes involved in the conversion of glycogen to glucose, as well as activating enzymes involved in the conversion of glycerol and amino acids into glucose. We should also know the role of adrenaline by attaching to receptors on the surfaces of target cells and activating enzymes involved in the conversion of glycogen to glucose. We also need to know the second messenger model of adrenaline and glucagon action involving adenylate cyclase, cyclic AMP, which can be shortened to CAMP with a lowercase c, and protein kinase. Finally, we should know the causes of type 1 and type 2 diabetes and their control by insulin and or manipulation of the diet. So let's make a start. Note that all cells require a constant supply of glucose. The concentration of blood glucose also affects the water potential. Therefore, the concentration of blood glucose must be kept constant. So, what are the factors that influence the concentration of blood glucose? These are food intake, exercise and metabolic rate. I.e. when you eat food, your concentration of blood glucose will increase because glucose is absorbed into the blood from the small intestine during digestion. Exercise also affects the concentration of blood glucose because the glucose demand of cells increases for the increased rate of respiration. The same happens when your metabolic rate increases. The glucose demand of cells increases for the increased rate of respiration. There are three key processes involved in control of concentration of blood glucose. These are glycogenesis, glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis. Glycogenesis is when glucose is converted into glycogen and is controlled by the hormone insulin. Glycogenolysis, i.e. the splitting of glycogen, is when glycogen is hydrolyzed into glucose. This is controlled by the hormones glucagon and adrenaline. And finally, gluconeogenesis is when non-carbohydrates such as amino acids and glycerol are converted into glucose. Gluconeogenesis is useful when glycogen stores run low and glycogenolysis can therefore not take place. Note that glycogen is stored in the liver and muscles. Note that the pancreas plays a major role in the control of blood glucose. It contains alpha cells which detect low concentrations of blood glucose and secrete glucagon. It also contains beta cells which detect high concentrations of blood glucose and secrete insulin. Both alpha and beta cells act as both receptors and effectors. To remember which type of cell secretes which hormone, I like to think of it as alpha cells secrete glucagon. Both have A's within their name. So how do we control the concentration of blood glucose? First of all, let us consider what happens if blood glucose concentrations are too high. This is controlled by the hormone insulin. If high concentrations of blood glucose are detected by beta cells, they secrete insulin which binds to specific receptors on the cell surface membrane of target cells. This triggers three events. First of all, it causes glucose channel proteins to chain shape and open, allowing more glucose to enter the cell. It also triggers the fusion of channel containing vesicles with the cell surface membrane of target cells, increasing the number of glucose channel proteins in the membrane as the channels are incorporated into the cell surface membrane, allowing more glucose to enter the cell. And finally, the binding of insulin to receptors on the cell surface membrane of target cells also activates enzymes involved in the formation of glycogen from glucose, which, as we just learned, is known as glycogenesis. Note that the binding of insulin also increases the rate of respiration, so more glucose is used up. Overall, the blood glucose concentration decreases back to the normal level. If the blood glucose concentration is too low on the other hand, alpha cells can detect this and secrete glucagon. Glucagon binds to specific receptors on the cell surface membrane of target cells. This has two main effects. 
First of all, it activates enzymes that convert glycogen into glucose, which, as we just learned, is known as glycogenolysis. And it also activates enzymes that convert glycerol and amino acids into glucose, i.e. gluconeogenesis. Note that adrenaline also plays a role in increasing the blood glucose concentration again if levels are too low. Adrenaline binds to specific receptors on the cell surface membrane of target cells, activating enzymes that carry out glycogenolysis. Overall, the blood glucose concentration is increased back to the normal level. Next we need to know about the second messenger model, which explains the action of glucagon and adrenaline in restoring the concentration of blood glucose back to its normal level. First of all, glucagon or adrenaline bind to receptors on the cell surface membrane of the target cell. This activates an adenylate cyclase enzyme. The adenylate cyclase catalyzes the production of cyclic AMP, shortened to CAMP, from ATP. Note that the AMP stands for adenosine monophosphate, i.e. it only contains one phosphate. The cyclic AMP then activates a protein kinase enzyme. The protein kinase enzyme activates a chain of reactions known as the cascade effect that leads to glycogenolysis. Note that one ATP molecule can be converted into many AMP molecules and therefore this amplifies the effect. One hormone binding can therefore have a large effect. And finally, we should know about type 1 and type 2 diabetes. We should know about the causes, the symptoms and the treatment. Type 1 diabetes occurs when the pancreas does not produce enough insulin. It's thought to be caused by an autoimmune disease that destroys insulin producing beta cells. Symptoms include thirstiness, because the concentration of blood glucose increases, so the water potential of the blood decreases. They also include excessive urination due to a higher fluid intake. And finally, another symptom is weight loss, because you respire more lipids instead. Treatment for type 1 diabetes include regular insulin injections and careful management of diet and exercise. Type 2 diabetes, on the other hand, may be either caused because the pancreas does not produce enough insulin, or glycoprotein receptors on the cell surface membrane of target cells become less responsive to insulin. Type 2 diabetes is associated with obesity, which is linked to diet and exercise. The symptoms of type 2 diabetes are the same as those for type 1. However, the treatment is slightly different. Type 2 diabetes can be treated by management of diet and exercise, and or by losing weight. Great, that would be the control of blood glucose concentration covered. We've covered the factors that influence blood glucose concentration, as well as the role of the liver in glycogenesis, glycogenolysis, and gluconeogenesis. We've covered the action of insulin when blood glucose concentrations are too high, as well as the action of glucagon when blood glucose concentrations are too low. We've covered the role of adrenaline when blood glucose concentrations are too low, as well as the second messenger model and how it explains the action of adrenaline and glucagon in increasing blood glucose concentrations back to their normal level. Finally, we've covered the causes of type 1 and type 2 diabetes and how blood glucose concentration in sufferers can be controlled by insulin and or manipulation of the diet. Great, that would be it for now guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment. Next time we will be covering the control of blood water potential.